And here we start to pull out the semi truck out of the driveway. We're going to position it a little bit better so that we can uh, have a little bit more room to maneuver and remove the old cab and then be able to install the new cab. Just where it was parked previously was kind of, you know, next to some buildings there, a house and a fence. So it was a little not as comfortable to work right there. That's why we decided to pull it out of there. Probably about 20 feet forward. Give us a little bit more access, a little bit uh, more maneuverability. And uh, that was, I think that's where we ended up right here in this, this spot. Now, I didn't show when I unbolted the old cab, but uh, we got it unbolted off. Got the, the bolts out of the front, uh, cab bushings removed, chained it up, and started backing out. Little by little, you know, making sure it doesn't wiggle or, you know, fall off. This cab was already completely destroyed, so, you know, we weren't going to be able to do much with it. Just wanted to pull it out of the way and start getting ready. While the cab is off, I took advantage of that and also uh, started cleaning up around the engine, making sure there was anything that needed attention, I'd be able to repair it or change it. Or uh, you know, it's a lot easier to work on the engine with the cab off if there's anything on the backside. So. I ended up replacing the front cab bushings as the ones on my frame were were really worn out. You know, here's the back side of the the whole truck walking forward. Was able to pressure wash the engine and also paint it up while this was off and also replace those uh, two fr uh, front cab mountain bushings while I had the whole cab off. Got the engine all masked up, ready to paint. Got the engine up all painted up. I ended up getting the spray paint at the Volvo dealer. It was about seven bucks a can. Now here comes the fun part. Got the old cab off. And then off the scenes, uh, I started tying up the cab to the boom lift. I did that part off the screen, didn't get a chance to record that, but pretty much got some heavy duty straps, tied it all the way around, made sure the whole cab was nice and balanced, then lifted it up with the boom lift nice and evenly, make sure that it wouldn't rock back and forth. You know, it's not that easy to make that happen, but um, did I did the best I could here just to get the cab as uh, balanced and, you know, even as possible. You know, it was only me and my friend doing this here. So, you know, it was only two of us, you know, two sets of eyes to check this out and look all the way around and make sure I'm able to load it up onto the frame evenly and avoid the engine. You got to be very, very careful. You know, this cab is a couple thousand pounds. It is all metal. It's not. It's not fiber. It's not a fiberglass cab. So the the metal, if it bumps into something, if it bumps into that valve cover on the top of the engine, I'm gonna need a new valve cover. If it bumps into the turbo and breaks it, I'm gonna need a new turbo. So you have to be very very careful. Move a little bit at a time. Look all around, and then move a little bit more. You know, get it nice and even. So I'm just driving it towards the frame right here. My friend is guiding me, telling me which way to turn it and go a little bit more towards the engine or go a little closer or a little bit more towards the drive drive axles. And also it was my first time driving one of these uh, boom forklift kind of uh, equipment i rented it for the weekend and got to use it for the most part very very little so 
but obviously I didn't want to endanger myself or endanger anybody else trying to lift it manually or anything. So, you know, this is a, the safer way to go. Anybody that ever wants to attempt anything like this, you know, if you don't feel confident, if you don't have the resources, uh, you shouldn't try it. It's, this is very, very dangerous. You could get hurt. So you just got to make sure, you know, safety at all times. And here we stopped real quick to talk it over and get a closer look. See how far I got to go. Now we got it moved into position pretty much, cleared the engine. I put some temporary wooden blocks on the back of the where the cab would connect to the air to the air ride, the air shocks or the air springs for the cab. I will be moving the cross member further south, further rear to accommodate the air spring bracket, that cross member that supports the air springs for the cab and the shocks. So that goes move that gets moved closer towards the rear and then drill new new bolts through the frame. Essentially just moving it back. I believe it was like 22 inches or I forgot exactly how many inches. But once the cab is up under there and once it's bolted up to those front to the bolts on the cab mount bushings on the front, then wherever it lands on the back, once it's nice and even. Get it mocked up right there. Make sure it's parallel. It's uh, perpendicular with the frame. You know, that cross member runs, you know, left to right across the frame. And then there's these small L brackets that, you know, have a little bit of wiggle room, but you still got to make sure that you get those as perpendicular and even with the frame as possible. You don't want your air springs for the cab sitting crooked. You have to make sure that those air, air springs are up and down, you know, not tweaked, not slightly you know, pointing left or right or anything. You have to make sure they are, are uh, airing up and down, not leaning anywhere. And also the the shocks, there's two short uh, shocks that go there. Now I'm climbing up to the top. Finally got it got the cab sat on the on the wooden blocks under the cab. You know, I'm still going to finish that up another day, but got the cab sitting on the the front cab cab mount bushings. A bolt is installed. So realistically that cab isn't going anywhere. Just got to install that rear uh, suspen the cab suspension cross member and get that finished up. I climbed up to the top of the cab and undid those straps off of the, the boom lift to be able to back it out of there. Got a bunch of straps to pick up off the ground. Here's a little walk showing the whole cab and the hood. Well, pretty much the whole truck just from the side. Thanks for watching.